Okay, I'm out here today for other reasons, but I figured I'd go ahead and uh, show you what's happening with the aquaponics. The uh, fish are doing great. The tanks are turning. I don't know if you can tell that color. There's my dog. He's white. Okay. The IBCs have a greenish tinge to them, and I think it's solely because uh, they're getting so much sunlight, and it's an algae if you can see all that building up on the inside of the tank. Now, I wouldn't be so worried about it if this tank had tilapia fry in it. Uh, this tank has <clears throat> one of the excess males because the two males in my indoor tank started fighting too much and were actually hurting the females in attempts to get them to breed. And I moved him and the four goldfish, if you can see them down in there, uh, to this tank. This one also has the overflow, so I was worried about putting any smaller fingerlings in here or any of the new fry uh, and having to put screens over the overflow that might wind up clogging it and stuff like that. So uh, what I am going to do is build a couple of uh, lids for these so I can get rid of the tarp. And if you notice, this one doesn't have as much algae because it's not the one getting the most sunlight. And the tilapia are apparently eating most of the algae produced in this one and if you can see them all down in there I can't tell if you can on this screen or not uh, they've gotten pretty big uh, there's several of them in there that are really big that are up around two and a half inches there's one in there that's getting close to, to three inches or so um, he's one out of the group of uh, four that hatched out of the first hatchling for one of the younger fish I was surprised any of them even hatched but four of them did and it was my first hatching so uh, I think there's two out of that group in here but one of them has grown the biggest there oh there he went right there too uh, it's hard to point him out they're moving so much but at any rate the tilapia are doing fine I've decided I'm gonna just like the privacy fence boards here I'm basically just gonna build a wall out of fence boards and two by fours the height of the IBCs all the way around them and that will shut off the sunlight to them and, and start restricting some of that algae growth and killing off some of the algae that is there. I'm going to use blue tarp and a half inch PVC to make hinged lids that will just cover each individual IBC that I can lift off to access whichever tank I want to. So although right now I've only got the two tanks and they're only cut like that as far as their lids only about a third of the top has been removed and it was the reduced section uh, probably should have went for one of the raised sections but that gave me more area uh, it's actually almost half the area of the top for accessing but being able to leave some of it still there so at any rate that's the progress with the fish as far as the grow beds this first grow bed has got some celery uh, broccoli broccoli up that edge, uh, snow peas, uh, a couple of cantaloupe vines that I'm going to train over the top into the bed back behind it. Uh, then it's got some yellow squash and some zucchini squash. I think it's five of each, five yellow, five zucchini, and broccoli scattered throughout because the broccoli should grow tall enough that it'll get up above the squash plants. Uh, and do fine. If not, broccoli seeds are cheap. I'll start some more. Uh, but the squash is doing just fine. It's looking big and vibrant. The first couple that I planted are doing really good. Uh, the zucchini and the yellow over there, those two had come up before any of the other did. And when the other came up, I po popped it in. Uh, and the snow peas, like I said, you can see they're doing quite well. Then this bed, I've got some radishes uh, scattered out in it, a little bit of broccoli, uh, a little bit of ruby red Swiss chard just because I had three plants started for some reason I can't even remember why then I've got a couple of uh, king of the garden lima uh, I can't remember if these are yeah I believe this is kidney beans here and then I've got a couple of honeydew back behind I'm going to do the same thing as the cantaloupe I'm going to train them up over the back let them drop down onto the ground behind it now I've got radishes and broccoli scattered throughout this one uh, 
I'm trying to remember what else is in it. I cauliflower. I've got several cauliflower scattered out in here as well. So it's just a matter of waiting and see how they're doing. But these radishes are really surprising me. I mean, these things are only a couple of weeks old from seed. And you can see the radish forming on them already right there. This one and uh, that one back there. This one's starting to swell a little at the top. Uh, so the radishes are really doing better than I thought they would. Uh, and I'm just really amazed because everything, I mean, I, I put stuff in these beds when it was smaller than this. Put it, this plant here basically had the two starter leaves on it. None of the adult plant leaves were on it, none of the true leaves, uh, and was only about that tall from the tip of the root to the tip of the leaves when I pulled it out of its little starter uh, peat mix and plopped it down into the bed and they do fine they they just take off uh the only thing i've still got left in the seed trays if you can see these i've got some carrots in here uh, i can't remember what this was i think this was a purple hole that for some reason the top of the plant died and i snapped it off but if you can see leaves are starting to develop down at the lower edge i have i'm just so surprised that it didn't die i'm thinking about pulling it up and popping it into the bed oh man I forgot to plant something last night. I missed that one. Oh well. Anyway, I had plenty of whatever it was. Let's see. Now this bed, sorry, stepping over stuff on the ground, has a few bell peppers planted along the front. And you can see how small they were. Uh, it's got some banana peppers, uh, sweet banana peppers scattered out in here as well. Then it's got, uh, Darn, I forget. I've got a layout that's got everything written on it, so I didn't bother tagging anything, and I forget. I've got a single little eggplant back there in the back. I've got the Kentucky Wonder across the back. Then I've got, uh, this isn't the cabbage. This cabbage is over there. This is the, uh, oh, turnips and mustard. That's what it is. It must have been a turnip I forgot to plant, so I've, I've got plenty of them. There's about 12 turnip, about uh nine or ten mustard uh, in here I was gonna plant some spinach but I really wanted the greens to wait until I had the floating raft but my IBC connection is kind of falling down on me and I have no idea when I'm gonna be able to get any more totes so and can't get a straight answer on it either uh, then here those two are purple hole I plant drop some purple hole in here last night to see if they'll come up uh, I've heard that you can do it with pea seeds that they're not, and bean seeds because they're not big enough to fall down through the gravel and get washed away, that you can just drop them in, uh, bury them so that they're remaining moist and that they'll germinate. So we'll see. But this one's got cabbage in it. I've got uh, four, uh, I believe it's four white cabbage, or green cabbage, sorry, and I thought I had four red cabbage, but the red cabbage are kind of small. They germ took longer to germinate. So uh, they're still just a little bitty. Like I said, I put them in here when they're just the starter leaves, no adult plant leaves on them. Then uh, I believe these are Floridade tomatoes here, these two. Uh, then this bed is all tomatoes. Uh, well, except it's got cucumbers along that back edge there. Uh, then I've got Floridade tomatoes, Rutgers tomatoes in the center, and then these six here are actually suckers that I pulled off of these Roma tomato plants and just stuck down in the gravel, just sliced the ends off, stuck them down in the gravel so that the ends would be uh, in the water when it came up to that level. They're not buried way down in deep. They're just a few inches in, so about an inch, inch and a half of them goes under the water every time it gets up that height. So they get a little bit of time underwater, a lot of time exposed to the oxygen and uh, they've been doing fine. Uh, the first day, I thought I was gonna lose a couple of them. This one, you can see where it's got the dead leaves on it or the brown sections of leaf. Uh, and the same over here. Uh, I thought it was a goner. It had, and this one down here, uh, if you can see that. I thought it was a goner. Uh, it wilted down so bad in the direct sunlight because I didn't shade them or anything. This is afternoon shade they're getting from the taller trees in the back of the yard. Uh, so they're not getting completely shaded out yet. Uh, but they're probably getting seven hours or more of straight sun uh, 
right now at this time of year and the heat height of the summer they'll get more than that but in this location but they all wilt kind of wilted down a little bit but then they sprung back up after a couple of days and started doing good they'd still wilt down in the hottest part of the afternoon when it's getting the most sun and then uh, come back in the late evening after it had cooled down a lot and they'd been out of the sun but uh, they've been in here about a week uh, ish week week and a half now so I'm, I'm positive they're all rooted they're doing fine if you can see they've got nice thick stems coming in uh, and I'm sure they'll do just great uh, once they get going uh, you can see the tomatoes in here are doing great the pl their plants are nice and sturdy nice thick stems and they're flowering uh, and then I've got some celery in here and you can see that celery down there uh, there's only three of these Rutgers tomatoes right here in the front or no Roma tomatoes sorry right here in the front one two three uh, then I've got some more celery down here that I'd started inside uh, when my NFT started going anaerobic because I didn't have uh, a pre-filtration system on it like I said it's a learning experience you can see how thick the stems are back there uh, that one's at least as thick as my index finger uh, and they're nice thick sturdy plants uh, doing just great you can see all the blooms on them so I'm really happy with them this broccoli is doing tremendous uh, I need to start dating when I plant this stuff I put all this stuff out here uh, when I transplanted it from inside now these the tomato plants were a, a few weeks old they were in cups uh, these pepper plants were a little over a month and a half old uh, and they were already flowering inside already had buds on them but these strawberries I put out here because they were dying in the indoor system uh, and the indoor NFT for the same reason as the other ones uh, put a few radishes in here a couple weeks ago or last week sorry and I've got a couple more that this strawberries actually come back so much that it's flowering again so uh, there were three strawberries in there I don't know where the other one went to and did it get cut yeah it got buried by the <laughs> got buried by broccoli leaf I might snap that leaf off or tuck it back out of the way but uh, and this hot pepper uh, is I had bent it over and tied it out of the way so I could keep the lights lower down inside over the gravel grow beds and it's finally starting to blossom and bloom uh, apparently I'm gonna have some yep there's a there's a pepper coming along there you can see the flower sticking around to it still but it's a pepper underneath there uh, doing just fine then the eggplants uh, three blooms on that one right there uh, this one I think was already a bloom and the bloom fell off so hopefully it got fertilized over here it's got three more blooms here two more pods coming there this one I think got fertilized no it didn't it self pruned it must not have gotten fertilized uh, the bloom must have died before it could do anything uh, eggplants will do that they'll self prune all the time but then this one's got four blooms right here two more there a fertilized one here that's going to be a, an eggplant then over here the first true well here's another bloom coming on but here's the first true eggplant nice nice very nice very happy with the way things are going uh, I've had bell peppers coming in for a while there's one there there's a few more down under well wrong plant sorry there's a few more down underneath here there they are there's three there uh, everything's doing great that I put in the system I was worried about having enough nutrients for the amount of stuff but I've got 350 fingerlings in the one tank the one full uh, he's about six inches long the male tilapia and four very large goldfish in the other tank so and I've got more on the way so I'm still working on the system still uh, trying to get things buttoned up I've, see where we're at over the limit all right I'm gonna be editing this this one taking out some of the uhs and ums uh, to shorten it a little bit 